Good afternoon, everyone. Today we're going to solve a trig equation of the form of 3 secant squared x plus 2 secant x equals 8. So, first off, we might notice that this has the general form of a quadratic equation, and so in the spirit of solving a quadratic equation, let's move the 8 over to the left side so that we have something equal to 0. And so we now have 3 secant squared x plus 2 secant x minus 8 is equal to 0. And now you can make a substitution of, let's say, let y be equal to secant x, in which case you would now have something like 3y squared plus 3y minus 8, and you can solve that way and then re-substitute um, out at the end. I'm not going to bother, but you do have the option of doing that if that helps. Let's just go through and try to solve it normally. So we're going to use decomposition because we have a squared term coefficient that is not simply 1, and so we're thinking what two numbers multiply for a product of negative 3 times negative 8 is negative 24, and simultaneously have a sum of positive 2. You can look at the factors of 24, um, and you'll come to the conclusion that those two numbers are positive 6 and negative 4. And so we're going to decompose this middle term as 6 secant x minus 4 secant x, the same way we always do our decomposition um, factory solutions. And so now we have 3 secant squared x plus 6 secant x minus 4 secant x minus 8 is equal to 0. Now we're in position to factor our first two terms and factor our last two terms. And so we can pull out of the first two a 3 secant x, leaving a secant x plus 2 inside the bracket. And from the last two terms, you'll see that we factor a negative 4, leaving us with, again, secant x plus 2 inside the bracket. That's a really good sign that we're on the right track because we have the exact same expression inside of both brackets. And so now, to factor completely, we have 3 secant x, the other material outside of the brackets, minus 4, and we have secant x plus 2 being equal to 0. And by the null factor law, we know that either for this product be equal to zero, we either need 3 secant x minus 4 to be equal to zero, or we need secant x plus 2 equal to zero, or both, right? And so that gives us solutions. Um, secant x is equal to add 4 divided by 3, and so 4 thirds, and we have secant x is equal to negative 2. And Lastly, we remind ourselves that secant x is fundamentally 1 over cos x, and so 1 over cos means the reciprocal of secant x, and so if we take the reciprocal of both sides, we get that cos x must be equal to 3 quarters, or that cos x has to be equal to positive 1 half. Providing solutions, x being the inverse cos of 3 quarters, and x being the inverse cos of 1 half. And then you guys can get those um, solutions. I don't have a calculator handy, so I'm going to leave those as is, just because I don't want to get these non-exact values for the inverse cos of 3 quarters. The inverse cos of 1 half, that we have at 60 degrees, or pi over 3, and at 300 degrees at 5 pi over 3. And um, the inverse cos of 3 quarters, that will be messier values. So I'll leave you guys, I'll leave that to you guys. Thank you so much. I hope this starts to make connections um, between, I mean, I hope you're getting used to solving um, equations that have the general form of a quadratic function, but that have maybe, um, you know, kind of messier substitutions to work around. And then finally, um, getting the trig values that solve our equations. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.